What's going on guys, we welcome to you all to our channel, we are Team Crushing the Meta and we are back with more premium collection reveals. In today's reveals we will talk about 3 cards, Narukami, Dark Regulus and Angel Films. The cards that we have already covered up are on the screen right now, you could check all the videos, all the links down below. The last one we covered was the one from Dimension Police. Let's jump into this video because we have 3 cards to cover as I said and we will start with the one with Narukami. If you haven't seen the video yet on our channel, you could check that out, but JJ, aka Mr. Rogers and Glacian, because the both of them are the specialists when it comes to Norokami on our Crushing the Meta team, they already did a first glance on this card, so already explained a lot, so if you want to get really into details, you could check that video out, an amazing video by both of them. And in this video, I'll just tell you a fast summary of the card and what we think of the card. Okay, so we have the Narukami Stride, which has, of course, the ability that it's the act on Fengard. You solve last one and you flip something face up from your G zone. Then you put this card face up back into your G zone. And then you bind four cards from your opponent's field and four cards from your opponent's drop zone. And then you draw one card for each four cards in your opponent bind zone and your opponent chooses a card from their hand in card or buying it so pretty much this guy what it does is very very smart the developers who made this card really looked at the clan and came out with one conclusion which is when it comes to Narukami, <clears throat> the strength of the clan lies in your grade threes and most of their grade threes have an act effect so what they did, they created a stride, which goes back to the G-Zone, even before he attacks. What does this mean? It means he gives you Thunder Strike, he gives you the Bind cards, which also work in the Vanguisher Standard deck. And you could just include him in your Standard Vanguisher deck or any other Standard deck. So it's pretty much a very, very, very good skill who is base and work perfectly in the clan that it's given to. Also, I may add, it's a very unique skill. Uh, now they have like cars like the Steel, cars like the Royal Palm Stride, and also like the Gear Stride. The Gear Stride goes back to the G-Zone after the attack, while the Roller Stride just copy the heart and add a skill to it. While well, this guy just go back, but he enables everything you need before he goes back, and he gives you even more draws, and he also lets your opponent discard cards or bind them. Okay, we talk about the art and the flavor text a little bit. Uh, we don't have the flavor text let yet, but I think you could already find it on Facebook or other social medias, like it's already translated. And the art looks really cool. Um, myself, I'm not an Arakami player, but again, if you want to go too deep into it, you should check the first glance from uh, Mr. Rogers and Glacian. Then we come to how does this card fits the clan, as I explained earlier, it fits the clan perfectly. So you have some cards in your G-Zone, like the strides from the uh, last premium uh, collection, but also one of your most killers like Voltage or VMAX, you could also use those, because he enables Thunder Strike. And then we talk about the Grey Freeze that he could work with, well, Driller or Vanguisher or even Gauntlet Buster right there, he works with all of them perfectly. So depend on what kind of deck you want to create, this guy just give you the ability to do so just by putting him into your G-Zone. And there are some cards, not much, like some cards you need to add to your G-Zone to work, which also in the first glance they talked about your G-Zone and how your G-Zone would look like. So if you want any help with that, you check that out or just contact them, ask them on our Discord or on Facebook or whatever you like, because we are on almost all social medias. So, pretty much, what do I think of the card? I think it's an amazing card with a unique skill that works perfectly in Narukami, and you could use all of your <clears throat> Grey Threes from the BC. So this is perfect for a standard plus deck, but it also works in a normal old school G Vanguisher deck because he just enables your um, your GB2, and then you go back to your Vanguisher, which you could also use his GB2 ability. So. Perfect, really, really, really perfect. Um, the clan and the format, what will happen to the clan with this guy? Well, you have some very interesting plays and you have a very good text to counter. Like this will counter Grand Blue, 
very hard because he binds from field and drop zone. Four from field and four from drop zone. So he bind eight cards or could bind eight cards. Not on the first try, maybe that would be less if your opponent does not have any regards and you could not bind that much. If your opponent didn't guard yet, then you need to rush home more, but sometimes you don't have the hand to rush. So, of course, he has some issues, it's not perfect, but he does work really, really well, especially in the clan that it's given to. What does this do for the clan and format? Well, it will not do much. It's not like Narakami will go up in tears now, that would not happen, but we will see more Narakami plays. We will see people that really have only a standard deck. And now they want to play premium as well because of the strike. Do that with Narukami, do that with Murukumu, with Royals, and with multiple clans because of this ability with Gears. So I do like the standard plus idea from Bushiro that pushes, pushes their sales but also let more people play. Because we have seen the two day events, and on the first day, there was always more players playing standard, and on the second day, less people will play premium. But because of these strides, people will just say, hey, why not? I'm already there. I could just book a hotel and then I will stay two nights or one extra night and I will play premium as well because all I need is this guy and some like Kray Elementals maybe in a G zone and some G Guardians and I'm good to go. And the other strides are cheap. They are not expensive to get so you could just get them. So very, very, very smart. Okay, now we go to Dark Regulus and as you may know, I love playing Dark Regulus as it is one of my favorite decks to play. So we have Unheaval Chief Golfant. So Golfant right here has an amazing art. But before we go to go to the art, let's explain his skill. So what does this guy do? Well, pretty much he has a Leaf Vanguard ability who said when he attacks, you counter blast one, you turn one card face up from the G-Zone, and he soul charges five. Then you draw any number of cards as triggers your soul charge. And if you soul charge some normal units, that amount your opponent has to guard with. So let's say that you soul charge two triggers and three normal units, then you draw two cards and your opponent, every attack that you attack, they need to guard with three cards. Okay, so they would say that's amazing. Well, yes, of course, but let's go into his skills one for one. Start with the art and the flavor text. We don't have the flavor text yet, but I would love it anyway because the card looks amazing. Uh, for the art, it does very look like a more of a Charlotte, like the, the Dark Regulus from the G era than the Dark Regulus now from the B series. I myself did not like the Dark Regular art from the B series, that's why I like I like playing darks, especially in premium. And when they made like the Gastille stride, I was so happy because they went back to more of the um, let's say GR at times, like with Gastille. So again, this guard looks really cool. Um, I even said to some of my friends, like, if this was the Spike Stride, I would be happy as well. They only need to put a ball in his hand. Also, one other thing that I was very happy with when I saw this and the angel for this stride is they are not dragons. I, I could not expect to see how a dragon could fit in Dark Regulars, and especially how that would fit into Spike Brothers, which is my favorite clan, and I would really... I want a card with good art. As you know, I really think about arts and flavor text when I'm playing the cards, as most or some of you guys don't really give that much thought to the art, more of the skill. Then we talk now about the skill and how does this fit the clan. Well, as you can see, right here we have the cards <laughs> that this card could work with, like Hope on Damp or even other kind of card restricts in Dark Regulus. Well, he works perfectly because your opponent would like to, would have sometimes to guard with two cards or three cards, but if it's with the Repressor or with the Charlotte, then you pretty much would have to guard with all grade zeros or without grade zeros, depending on which card you are guarding with. And in this case, if you cannot guard with grade zeros and you have to guard only with normal units, then it's really... Okay, he does work only from hand, so you could still G-guard, but in the most situations, he would be a pain in the you know what because <laughs> because he pretty much would let you guard with more cards which you already have trouble with guarding these cards if you guard with hope on them then it's even more devastating but it's harder to get off but i could see some people play and build those decks and then we come to Gostil and melan well why could we say this guy 
problem of this guy is he costs a counterplace. And costing a counterplace means you could go to Balam or go to Gastil. Because Balam and our new stride work in the same way. They both have kind of guard restrict and they both draw you cards, as in Balam give you extra drive check. The thing with Balam is, is he works perfectly with your repressor right there and Charlotte because they pretty much compensate each other. Like the one could say he cannot guard with grade uh, zeros and the other one say he cannot guard with grade ones, which means they could work perfectly together because with that your opponent would have way less cards to guard with. So that does make Balam in some situations better. Also, if you have multiple cards in your G zone, Balam is very smart soul charge. What do I mean? Well, if you have three cards face up in your G zone, with Balam, you don't have to say I soul charge six. You start with soul charging two, and then soul charge two more, and then if you say, hey, that's good, then you stop. You don't have to soul charge as much as your G zone, it's up two. So that's also very good. But with him, you'll have to soul charge five. If you lose five triggers, you draw even more, and you pretty much get to the to decking out very fast if you stride into this on the second stride or if you stride into him two times. And that's when you have to go back to Blader Mouse, and then you have to go Blader Mouse, then this guy again, and that would be very strange because then you would be soul charging triggers because Blader Mouse put all the triggers back, and with triggers you draw more. If it was the other way around, then he would work better with Blader Mouse because if you'd say, hey, for every trigger you soul charge, you are going to have to guard with extra giga of extra card, then that would be perfect. But it's not that this way; it's the other way around. So that's also very strange by the creation of this card, or it's nice from the developers to think about that and not make him too strong. Okay, so you would say, hey D-Boy, okay, this looks perfect, and um, so it's a perfect stride. Well, no, this stride has two issues. The first one is he cast a counter blast, and I would think it was better if they created the stride, which does not cost Count Blast, but more of a setup card. So if this guy has the same ability, but a little bit different, let's say what he does is finger on place or in acts, whatever, you do not cost Count Blast, just flip a card from your G-Zone face up, you soul charge 5, for every trigger you draw, for every normal unit, you retire one unit from your opponent. If that was the case, then he does not need to cast Count Blast. But because they add the guard ability to him, make him way too strong if he does not cast Counter Blast, and that's when they add the Counter Blast. But the Dark Regular players want a stride try that does not cast Counter Blast, because your game plan versus Dark Regulars is not giving them Counter Blast. And this would mean I was talking with Chris van der Linde, one of our best players who was also went to Wars last year with Dark Regulars, played the Kagiro, but he was he went there with uh, with Dark Regulars, like, uh, he was qualified with darks and he plays darks a lot as it's also one of his favorite clans he played now less because he just dislike playing adding bobo and dislike that the opponent does not give damage and those kind of plays and with this guy we or he also told me we'll have to keep playing bobo otherwise this would not work because he'd still cast a counter blast and if you have that counter blast then most of the time you will go for your gust steel and if you don't then Balam is also a good option. Well, this is a better option as a first stride, but still, it's not the best. So it was better if they give, gave us a stride that did not cost counter blast, but it's not OP. It's just a good first setup stride. So those are my thoughts about this guy. Me, myself, I would definitely play him because he's a lot of fun. And that's the second issue. The second issue is the cards that he sold charge are at random so you don't know if he would give you more draw or he would be just like hey i would like to give you a lot of card restrict because the guard restrict is nice but you need to have the hand for it you need to have the stands left in your deck you need to have the cards that work with it perfectly if not then you would need to do something different but you do not know what what will you get? It's up to chance. So because of that, that makes the card more of a fun card than of a really consistent card that you could rely on. And me, as I play Dark Regulars more for fun in premiums, I play more Charlotte and I could come I do combine it with NLK and I do play the NLK build 
but most of the time I like to play Charlotte or play like some old school strides and stuff. This guy would per would fit perfectly in my deck, which I play a lot of stands, and I do rely on Repressor and Charlotte to kill my opponent. And this would be perfect for me because drawing card would give me card restrict is nice, or I could just go for the lamp. So it's like a second option. So all in all, a very fun card to use, but it's definitely not what Dark really needed. What will this do for the clan? Well, not much. He could be sometimes interesting if you do have the counter blast and you don't really want to go for Gusteel because if you're out of NOKs or if you do just don't have the cards for it to soul charge, you cannot get to the soul charge 13, then he's nice because he's a very good first strike. But again, he costs a counter blast, which means no, most of the time you don't have that. You don't have that to work with. But hey, let's say you have one Bobo, you could use the Bobo, and then you could use this. And after that, you could always, of course, counter charge that counter blast with like your monochrome cat or something different. So yeah, I like him. I, lo I love the art. I, I like this, the idea behind the skill, but I would have made the skill a little bit less effective and just took the counter blast out. All right, so now we come to the Angel Fist strike, which is Basazil, if I'm announcing this right. Um, she's very interesting on paper, but we will really get into the card, we really get to know the card, then you think, well, hmm, does this really work in Angels? Well, let's first read her ability. So she has the GB3 ability, which is the first ability. This is interesting because the only stride till now that we saw with a GB3 was the one from Royals, but that one is really, really strong because it pretty much copies the skill of Heart. So you would say, hey, that would be a very strong ability because it's GB3. So when she's placed, you uh, until the end of the fight, okay, your damage zone becomes 7. So you'd lose at 7, not at 6. So you could add and take 1 more damage. And if you have GB5, then you pretty much get to 8. Alright, that's very interesting. You would lose not at 6, but at 7. And with GB5, you would lose at 8. Okay, very, very, very interesting skill. It's kind of the same as healing, but in a different way. Because now we have more cards to work with, with, with your deck. But you also kind of could take more damage, which means more damage triggers. So your opponent could not finish you off easy. And then you get to the counter to the second ability, which is a counter blast four, four, <laughs> okay. And uh, till end of turn, when your opponent would call cards from their hand to the guardian circle, she or he must call the same number of cards as card in your damage zone. So let's say that you they rush you and you took five damage, and then you could just attack them back use the, for counter blast and they would have to use five cards at the same time to guard away. Okay, you would say, yeah, really, D-Boy, this really sounds amazingly freakishly strong. Well, that's also what we thought. When we first read this card, we were like, damn, really? This is pretty insane. And then that's why we like to do the video one day after the reveal, because we really like to talk about it in our team and there are a lot of thoughts that we could give because we have a huge team we also know a lot of good known players we could also talk with so when it comes to angel feather i really got with james and laura uh, from the netherlands also to discard and talk a little bit about it and we pretty much came to the same conclusion but first, let's talk a little bit about the art and the flavor text. We don't have the flavor text yet, but again, I think that you could find that now on the internet. For the art, she does look really nice. Again, she's like in between the G era art and also the new art, which Angel Feather really kept their nice touch to the art. They did make it a little bit darker in the, uh, let's say in the V series later on with Melek. But again, I do love the Angel Feather art and this looks also very nice like with the wings and the way she sits and everything. She's like the queen and having everything around her attacking for her. So it does really look amazing. And now we talk about how does this fit the clan. Well, when it comes to Angel Feather, if you remember the stripe that we got from last year premium collection, it was pretty much a Raphael but a better version. She also called Raphael if I'm not mistaken. What she does is pretty much you counter blast 3 and then you heal 2. But you do not need really get the counter blast 3 most of the time. So it was a stride that you never went to. And to be honest, the deck didn't even 
people didn't even play it at all most of the time they just left it because the best deck that you have with angels is angel geezing and when the v series came out angel took a very different approach with hospital with having a killing turn it was like very 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 slow and took you to the game and then with the sets later on we got different vrs like you can see on the screen which got you the ability to be more aggressive with the deck like i like i love the way that the that how melee work because it pretty much give you aggression you take damage your own you kind of heal and take damage and call and stuff and you do a lot and for the angel further player they really felt that darkness of the card and this card does not have that this card is like a shell it, it looks really perfect on the outside but it does nothing on the inside and i will tell you why first of all it's a gb3 and she does not flip at all that would mean that what you want to do is you want a good first strike and at least one jigar to get into her or you would say hey i want a, a good uh, first strike who flips and then i will get into her because then i would also have gb3 that works but with only g guarding that's hard because you need to jigar twice in one turn which we will be your first turn it's possible but it's a little bit difficult and to be honest you want to get into her as your third stride or second stride if you jigar twice because you want the gb5 if you get the gb5 then you get her skill at once okay all of that is possible if you have a good first stride which you don't really have you would say hey i could fall on and use uh gabriel well yes of course but it's just the clan does not have that much strides to work with that much cards to really make it very strong that's why you fall on Gizzi because the clan is made very defensively and you could really use Gizzi for your advantage because you can kind of take damage and you get faster to Gizzi and that's, that's the way Angels was played with no seal and then also sometimes Gabriel but mostly with no seal if it was no seal Gizzi and when it comes to this guard it pretty much does not work with these standard cards which we wanted in this set we, we actually thought that wish road or the developers will give each clan a card that works with their standard deck and standard angels is doing great they're sitting at the amazing points in the meta they're not doing very high but the angel players are happy with the way that the clan work they just want to take the deck they want to play it if it's big tournaments or if it's just for fun they really enjoy playing the deck and that's what we want to to do in premium as well so why didn't they give them a stride that works with the way that they work now in the current standard build they didn't do that the developers chose to give them something very different something that works with gb which means you would have to stride into multiple strides okay so angel feathers does not have a very strong first stride so this card is not as good as it should be then we have the second ability with the first ability they do not combine well because if your opponent rushes you too much you could use the second ability but you do not have gb3 so that's stupid because you can get to the stride use the second ability but again you cannot for use your first ability because you will not be at gb3 maybe you're at gb3 but you're never on gb5 so you cannot really do it if you play against new Lecter, you maybe could hope to kill them if you get some stat triggers or do some multi-attacking but you already lost all of those key pieces because you had to defend yourself so it really does not make any sense she does not search your deck for the right key pieces she does not give you any draw power and that's the first skill that that should have been the first skill who would work with the second skill you give us a skill who has guard break like the one from Dark Regress, then you need a little bit of draw power, you need a little bit of call power, you need a little bit of something power. You do not have that. She does not give any power at all, but she does also not give you any draws or search or something. So her second ability is a stand alone ability who has nothing to do with the first ability. Then we come to the first ability and you would say, hey, we could use that very well in clans 
uh, or decks that use like Gizem because then you would take more damage, you could heal more and do a lot, of, a lot of stuff. But again, I would say, hey, if that was the first ability, then make her the same as the Narukami Strike. Use the first ability, you get uh, you get your damage up to one more, then she go back, so let's say to your um, to your G zone, then you could heal with any of your other strikes. Make her the same as Sea Breeze. You ride into your grade 3, use your act ability, and after that you could strike into this guard and you could have one more card in your G zone uh, in your damage zone. But pretty much the first ability does not work with the second ability. The second ability needs power, giving power to the front row for your multi-attacking with your stance because angels have very good multi-attacking options. Problem is, they would have to go protect two, I would think. But again, she does not do more than that. Actually, you ride once or twice and you have like both protect two on both sides, which do nothing because you would rather have protect one most of the time if you want to survive. So again, a very nice design, but they went wrong with uh, the way that this still work. I think that the GB3 is a little bit too much. If you look at the old, like the stride from the old set, it cost 3 counter blast. This stride cost 4 counter blast. Yes, they could counter charge like crazy, but they need to have the damage in the first place, which they don't. You will kill them off in one stride with shadows or with Gusteel or with the turbo spike or whatever clan you're playing and you will not give them the four counter blast to do so and there is no way in hell that they would have two bobos in hand if they play bobo or any other anything else like the 6k the 8k grade uh, the grade one and grade two that give you also damage and you could counter charge it, it would not be possible to go from one damage to four it would not be possible to do from two to four even if you do so then you're pretty much already using resources <clears throat> and you have to put all of those cards into your deck which makes your deck even less consistent so all in all as as i said both skills are really good and amazing on paper but they do not work in real life and it just doesn't do anything for the current angel feather deck which is very sad because they have three amazing drs and they have a very good triple R's. They could do so much doing with their great ones, with their great two, with their guard. Uh, even they have like now like that you cannot use sentinels and stuff because of the great one. It's really amazing deck and it's a lot of fun. I even like I do play against it a lot. Like I ask James sometimes, well, hey, let's play a game on area and stuff because I like playing against the deck and it's really fun to play with or to play against. But this did not bring that back, did not bring that aspect that we have in standard up to premium, which is a little bit sad. Alright, that's actually it about this video. Um, we could talk about how this Angel Feather do in the format will do nothing because people would not even pick up the deck. And I think this is one of the strides that people would not get at all. I would get her just for the art because I like the art and I think Angel Feathers would do that as well. But pretty much people would not play Angel Feathers in premium because of this card and because of there is no connection between standard and premium okay that's actually it about this video and th i'd like to thank you all for watching remember to check our channel out to give us your thoughts what do you want to see next and also tell us in the comment section below what do you think of these strides and which strides are you still wanting to see and what do you think that skill would be what do or what are you missing? Just look at your G zone and you think, well, hey, that's the card I'm missing. That's the skill I want. Alright. Thanks for watching yet again. Until next time.